In JavaScript, the singleton pattern can be a little confusing. I know, because I've been there. And the reason why it can be confusing is because a singleton looks a lot like the modules that we talked about in the previous two lessons. In fact, it's easy to assume that a module is a singleton and a singleton is a module. But that isn't the case because they have two distinct purposes. The purpose of a module is to cleanly separate units of code, but that's completely different from a singleton. Let me read to you an excerpt from the Design Patterns book that I talked about in the introduction. This is the intent of a singleton. It's to ensure a class only has one instance and provide a global point of access to it. Now, of course, this is JavaScript. We don't have classes. So let me rephrase this for JavaScript. Ensure an object only has one instance and provide a global point of access to it. So when we talk about a singleton, we're not talking about the single instance of an object. We're talking about the thing that ensures that there's only one instance of the object and provides access to that one instance. So in order to show you the difference between a singleton and a module, we're going to reuse the DOM utility module code from the previous two lessons, but we're going to write it as a singleton in this case. Let's start by creating our DOM variable, and I'm going to use an immediately invoked function to contain all of our code. We need our counter variable, which we called underscore counter, and let's initialize that as zero. Let's also create a variable called instance. This is going to be the single instance that we want to manage. Right now, I'm going to leave it as undefined, although you could initialize it as null if you wanted to do that. Next, we need our function for generating the ID. This needs to return a string that has custom ID and concatenates our counter plus plus. And then we need our create function. This has the tag name parameter as well as the ID parameter. We want to first of all create our element. So document.create element and pass in tag name. Next, we want to set the ID of the element. So we first of all want to try the value of the ID parameter. If there's nothing there, then we want to generate the ID with our generate ID function. And then finally, we want to return the element. Now, if we were writing a module, we would return the object that had the generate ID and create methods. But since we're writing a singleton, we need the globally accessible access point for our instance. And that's what this object is going to have. It's going to have a method called get instance. And its purpose is to return our instance object. But of course, we don't have anything assigned to instance. So we first of all need to create the object that we will store in that variable. Now we could create this object in a variety of different ways. We could use a constructor function, or we could just use a normal function that creates an object, or we could just simply create the object. It really doesn't matter, and it's really up to what our particular application needs. In this case, I'm going to write just a normal function called create instance. It does not have any parameters, and it is going to return an object that has the generate ID method as well as the create method. And we will use this function whenever we call the get instance method. So we first of all want to return instance because if there is something assigned to instance, then we want to return that. Otherwise, we want to assign a new object to the instance variable. And we will do so by calling the create instance function. And so this is the key to our singleton. We only have one instance. So it doesn't matter how many times we call this get instance method. We get the same object from this method. So let's go over to the browser and let's see this code in action. Let's create an element. We will call the variable el and we will use dom.getInstance and then we will call the create method. Let's pass div to create a div element and then let's check its ID. Now obviously if you were going to call create or generate ID multiple times, you would want to save the instance to a variable. So let's create a variable called instance, and let's set it to dom.getInstance. And then we could test to see if we have an actual singleton. So we could check to see if instance is equal to dom.getInstance. And we can see that that is true. 
Now, the singleton pattern does have its uses, but as far as JavaScript is concerned, if you find yourself needing the singleton, then you need to re-evaluate your code. It could indicate that the modules in your application are tightly coupled. Plus, singletons can be more difficult to test. And of course, this doesn't mean that you have to avoid the singleton at all costs. They are useful, but just be careful when you use them.